Hello people, this is the uh, Global Elite Discussion talk, and this talk is uh, the 1.1 talk, and I've called it 1.1 because the first talk that we did about the Global Elite Discussion Group on Facebook didn't really have much volume, so <laughs> we've decided to do an introduction again for people that have come aboard the Facebook group, and uh, so we'll get into it. So what we want to do is just talk about the objectives of why we're doing what we're doing with this group and what we talk about and what we're posting and its purpose. And um, so my name's Cliff and or Cliff Rockefeller and um, my co-host is Lucy. How's it going, Lucy? Hi. Hi. Good, thanks. How are you? Yep. Excellent. And um, so how long have we been doing this group for now? It's just coming up to a year, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. yeah. And we were going to cap it at 300, but um, it's grown significantly. So, um, yeah, I think that, it, that we're doing really well. Yep. Yeah, yep. looks like we've got 710 members now mm -hmm. um, and growing. Um, and we, we've called it Awakening uh, New Zealand Global Elite Discussion. Um, the reason being is that we both are in the vicinity of New Zealand and we want to give it a perspective because we know that there's a lot of groups and talks out there on the internet about the global elite or the New World Order, what do you want to call it? And we want to just sort of have a New Zealand perspective because a lot of people around the world don't, some of them don't even know where New Zealand is. <laughs> so Yeah. That's right. And a lot of New Zealanders are not aware of what's going on either. Yep. Within their own, our own country. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> For sure. Yeah, I mean, I remember uh, back in around about 2003, um, when I really started to get into this stuff, um, it was really amazing to find out that the people that we have in power we are taught to believe are good people the majority yeah. are good people and the the real awakening is realizing that they're not they're, they're the opposite of that not saying they're all bad but the majority yeah that's for sure yeah <laughs> so um when i found that out i wasn't really surprised though in some respects because i thought well you know of course there's going to be evil greedy people out there and um so I just ventured more and more into it. And when I ventured into the global elite, we'll call it, um, a big part of it uh, did get my focus on looking at America. And um, like we've spoke before, Lucy, about um, American history, um, you know, the, the Revolution War and uh, the, the War of Independence, you could say. Um, we've all heard heard about it in New Zealand, uh, you know, in school, but they never really go into much detail about it, do they? No. Um, so by finding the um, American side to what had happened there, I learnt the reasons why they had the gun laws they did, you know, open carry. Um, in New Zealand, Australia, Britain, Canada, the Commonwealth countries, um, you can't open carry. And um, so when I learned about why that was the case, I could see that America was founded on totally different principles that New Zealand was. Um, and that most New Zealanders didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a shock because the reason why we're not told in New Zealand or the Commonwealth countries is because we're ruled by the Queen. We're ruled still by Britain. Um, New Zealanders really could say a British colony. Yeah. All right, we got the Union Jack on the flag, you know. So most people in New Zealand have just accepted that as normal. Yeah, that's right. Um, they don't know the history of the oligarchies and the uh, royalties and the kings. They don't know what the crown is, how it was founded. Um we talked to, I talked to my parents and older people about history of New Zealand and they say we got away from the Vatican and the European dictatorship. 
Um, yeah. and, and so did the Americans. So what, it, what blows me away is well, it's right in front of your face still. <laughs> What's going on here? You're cooperating still with them. I thought you were independent. <sighs> so it's a very interesting thing when you uncover that. It really is. Yeah. Um, because really that is the problem, is this crown situation, this crown corporation that um, works like a gigantic mafia, really. But it, is it? Is it just the crown? I mean, to me, um, the Americans have a big part to play in what's mm. going on in New Zealand now. Yes. Um, yes. And they seem to have overridden everything about yes. the monarchy. So, yes. yeah. And that's why it gets so confusing for people, I think. Um, it's two separate mafias. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've done a big um, head job on America as well as New Zealand. Um, but New Zealand have thought of the oligarchy as normal. That's the frightening thing. Where in America, there's still a lot of, you could say, patriotic Americans that know basically what America stands for and that it used to be a republic. And so right. they um, understand their constitution a bit more than, say, New Zealand, where we have the Bill of Rights, etc. Um, ask a New Zealander if he knows the Bill of Rights or even what his basic rights are. Yeah. They yeah. don't know. So we're way more in the dark than even the American people. But what's shocking in America is that the uh, Washington, D.C., is a Vatican-run operation. You know, anyone that studied a lot of the researchers' work out there from America and around the world, um, some of the top people have showed us that. They've shown us the documents, they've shown us the details of all that, that the Vatican, um, i.e. crown... See, that's the other thing, is that this crown operation is a Vatican-British um, conglomerate. It's a, it's a, a, it's both uh, sides of the same. You know how um, we're told that the um, uh, you know, like the royalty are opposing the Vatican, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not. <laughs> they're not. I mean, um, the church is heavily involved in Britain, mm. right? And so all these churches go back to the Vatican. This is, this is just giving a big scattergun sort of approach to it. But this is really what we are laying a foundation for the group again in, in global elite discussion, is that it's a, it's a one system over the world. And that includes the Middle East, most of the Middle East, mm -hmm. if not nearly practically all the Middle East. So really, it's already been done. You know, this gigantic uh, global control grid um, has been here for a long time. But it's just that now it's morphing more obvious into the open. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's coming into the public side type thing. Um, and there's different levels of the way that it's operated through history. Um, when I, in, back in 2003, 2004, when I came across this corruption, I also found a lot of law stuff along with it, which, mm. and I think why that was is because the law showed why it was corrupt. You know, and we're talking, when we talk law, we're talking generally international law or common law, um, which is a broader sense. You know, it's international. International law can be used in any country. Yeah. Um, so that showed me the corruption of what was going on here on an international yeah. level. Um, how deep it goes. Yeah, how yeah. deep it goes. How, how countries are corporations or practically any entity with a few people in it, a legal entity, is a corporation, right? Um, those people out there, a lot of them have already heard that your name is even a corporation, right? They gave you a corporation so you can operate in commerce. So, <laughs> so corporations are very important to look at, and corporate law, which is leaning into international law, which I want to also post stuff about, which I have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, We've got Bill Turner. Uh, I might do another recorded talk with him. I still stay in touch with him. Bill Turner. A lot of people in New Zealand know of him. 
Um, he's mm. found some amazing stuff with um, the remedies at law, which um, the remedies at law he's found, like myself, go through the Bible. Mm-hmm. Like he uses the Bible um, a lot. And so it's almost like a game where they've got um, fear-induced propaganda, which is everywhere. Yeah. And they've also got... Oh, the, and, and the fear propaganda's got fake laws included with it, which are not laws. Mm-hmm. And the reason they're not laws is because they're unconstitutional, or what we call unconstitutional. Right? So... Yeah. Some of you out there have heard of statutory law. Mm -hmm. And statutory law only applies to corporations, not people. Okay. So that's weird, eh? But that's that's the way it works. And so real law or international law or common law is more powerful than statutory law, this corporate law that applies to your corporation, your name or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. And so by using international law, common law, you're using words in a certain way to, to leverage constitutional issues, which means fundamental issues, <clears throat> to get control of the corporate law. Yeah. Because, you know, anything we write down is a record, and if it's attached to an entity, the entity is basically a corporation. So... So, so the corporate law, international law, common law is more like a force of manoeuvre, a set of tools to manoeuvre within commerce or corporations. That's mm-hmm. all over the world. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing to know that because then when we see that basic um, situation, we see the remedy and what to do. And there's a remedy there because the people that run countries use it. That's how they get off. Yeah, it's taking back the power, isn't it? That's it. It's taking back the power. So we have remedies. We have ways of keeping the corporate government in check. We'll call it the corporate government. <clears throat> Another reason it's a good idea to call, call it a corporate government is because, as we know, no one steps forward. The only person that steps forward for responsibility is the Um, president or the um, prime minister in the Commonwealth countries Mm -hmm. Um, and they step forward but they don't really say or do anything they're trained to speak in certain ways or um, they leave office just willy nilly like (laughs) like Alan did right (laughs) (laughs) he just leaves leaves office and um, them puppets yeah yeah I mean that in itself proves he's a puppet right I mean yeah Trump (laughs) for instance oh my god Trump. Yeah, well, that's yeah, it's another story. I mean, yeah. a lot of people say he's good. I like the guy too. I think he's good, but I don't think he can change anything really, in on an agenda level because he doesn't have enough power to do that. One I, man doesn't have enough he's power. An, he's another puppet. That's yeah. What I yeah. Yeah. So he'd have to be if he's yep. in the White House. He'd have to be. Yep. Um. So, yeah, so that's sort of a, a bit of background about myself. And what about yourself, Lucy? Well, how did you get into this? Um, <laughs> I think it probably goes back a long way. Um, um, seen a movie as a child. It was a religious one about the end times and um, the 666 on the hand and um, a cashless society. And that terrified me, and just being awake and aware and watching ever since, and uh, seeing it turn into a cashless society, um, yeah, seeing the fake news, <laughs> 9-11, um, the moon landing, just, just everything throughout my life, just watching yep. and waking more and more every day, yep. and um, I'm still waking. How how deep does it go? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. Have you sort of seen or noticed that it does come back to yourself again, though? You know what I mean? Uh, does, do you sort of see it, that it comes back to the person themselves? Um, I'm sort of 
pendulum swinging. I'm swinging between everything's totally out of our control. No, I can do something. Mm. I'm just swinging between the two. I'm just, yep. I'm bewildered. Yes. Um, sometimes it's really depressing. Yes. Yeah, it is. It really gets me down. Um, hopelessness. Yep. Um, yep. But then I think, well, you know, we go through things for a reason. And when you see the good things that come out of bad, it's mm. it's like, yeah, everything's sort of supposed to be the way it is. Sure. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, good observation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've found the same. Yeah, it is. It, I've, a lot of people have said similar things and I've experienced it myself as well, where some days are bad days where you, <clears throat> you might get caught up in more negative side of things. Mm. And what's happening, or well, you're learning something new about it that's quite negative. Um, and it would be a good idea for people that do want to learn all this to learn some positive stuff too, like learn some mind power stuff, learn some um, hip basic hypnosis, and learn some basic um, encouragement things, empowering things, because th this this works too, you know. I mean. Um, people have said to me before, um, not all propaganda is bad. And, um, and I said, yeah, but it's not the truth. Propaganda is not the truth. But it, if we see that propaganda is good and bad, um, you can propagandize yourself in a good way. <laughs> right? I've never thought of that. Hmm. And you can. And that is um, a lot of people out there doing positive hypnosis, NLP, etc., um, coaches, um, they they do that. You know, they're programming you with a belief, and um, you can do that. You know, you can do that. And if you if you're going to get into the law thing and, and break yourself free, you're going to need to do that because the fear will stop you from doing it. You'll you'll not do it because you're in fear. So you have to learn some stuff about empowering yourself. You have to do that because getting deep into the matrix and the darker side is you know it's disempowering and it's it'll crush you <clears throat> but it is worth knowing because if you can see the machinations on what can be done and what has been done and what will be done um, you'll know what to expect and you'll know um, you'll prepare for it you'll know you know what to do about it like if if, if there was a dictatorship tomorrow here I wouldn't be too worried. I'd know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Because I understand it. Um, That's the difference between awake and not being awake. Um, I, I just think we're lucky being awake. Yeah. And, yeah, and, um, yeah being aware. Mm. Knowing yeah. what's going on. Mm. That's a good thing for people that get depressed about it, mm -hmm. is to, uh, remind yourself that... Um, you're more awake than a lot of people out there. Mm. Um, pat yourself on the back. I mean, you you know which way not to go. Yeah. With things. Um, still, it's still a time factor, like we've spoken before, um, mm. about learning commercial law. Learning. Yes. I mean, yes. that's something that we all have to learn to do, basically what are our priorities and we are all running ragged yep. trying to pay off our mortgages and survive from day to day yep. um, so what's your advice for that yeah definitely just keep balance in mind <clears throat> know yourself as, as always that this is like these types of things i'm talking about are things that i've come across time and again over years and years that i use myself and that that work that's, that seem to work um, so it all, kind of, like I was, I was saying before with, um, you know, um, the positive propaganda, um, it, if you know yourself, you know, you know your motives, you know your um, what upsets you, you know what your weak points are. If you're honest with yourself, then you'll start to make positive action like there's uh, there's no one tool that i can say go and do this uh, for everybody because everyone's different <clears throat> everyone's unique and mm -hmm. so the only tools people can give you is the ones that are quite general you know that some of them are quite obvious
that balance, you know, and <clears throat> if someone's new to this sort of thing, take small bites of it until you strengthen yourself up and, and with anything. Um, and also uh, to cut corners, ask good questions. You know, if people are in the group, ask good questions. If you don't know something, ask. If I don't know, someone might. And if I do know, I'll try and explain it in a very simplistic way that hopefully you can, it'll set a lot off and you'll go, oh, right, and you'll feel more co confident about it. Um, when myself and others that I've known for a long time um, were starting o into this sort of material, um, we had no one to, to um, talk to even about it. Um, I had to try it out myself. And <laughs> there's nobody that's going to support me in it because <clears throat> they usually don't believe you, one thing. And then secondly, if you start talking law, they think, well, you don't have a, a law degree. You know, how, how the hell do you know this? And then you've got to say, well, look, you know, this is beyond a country's system of law. They, they haven't heard of any of it. <laughs> you know, they don't know any of it. So there's no one to help you. So um, the only people that could help me were proper teachers that inevitably um, most of people new to this stuff will say, is he for real? <clears throat> you know, and is he a shill? And I don't know if I can trust him and all that. And we all do that. And I had that for years too, you know. Oh, you know, who should I trust and all that? But eventually you start to make sense of things and you think, no, nah, this guy's onto it. Yeah, that's right. Nobody's yeah. perfect. Yeah. You know, someone, everyone out there is going to make a mistake. But usually I've found the good teachers are the ones that are good at a certain or a handful of topics. And <clears throat> the honest ones don't venture any further because they think, oh, I don't know, that's not my subject. Um, and but for, I've, I've studied a lot of different teachers in a lot of different ways and worlds that I can point the finger at each of them and say, you're wrong here, you're wrong here, you're wrong here. But I'm not saying you're wrong about your material. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they might have a blind spot with yeah. the dark side. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, so the Global Elite Group really is quite a broad subject of topics because we're covering um, propaganda, mind control, which is most of it. That is really what the whole thing is founded on. Um, <clears throat> the techniques of warfare, all the rest of it. <clears throat> um, bit of politics, because politics is influential. Um, law, of course. Um, the banking system, the money system, uh, which is pretty much locked and loaded with the law which is really interesting. I mean, <laughs> how many people know that, that your law system is intimate with money? You know, that when you talk about government, you're talking about banks. Yeah. Um, when we look at the old American movies, who was the governor of the old American town? He, he was a banker, and he had the cigar and the watch thing, and he'd put his boots on the desk, and he was the governor. <laughs> he wasn't a politician. <clears throat> a politician... The, the way I understand a politician really is this, and there's evidence out there all over the place. A politician is hired, of course, or selected by the elite. We know that. They're all selected. But he's meant to be speaking for you like a priest to God. He's meant to be speaking for you. They call him a minister, a prime minister. It's, it's like a priest. And he's speaking for you to the bankers, which is neutral. Like I've yeah. said before, banks are neutral. They control the debt and the credit. Mm -hmm. And they control the overworld and the underworld. They control it all. <laughs> right? So the only way that you can get around it is to go where the bankers go to be free. That's why they're actually, that's why they're called free masons. They're free. And, huh? <laughs> yeah, um, there's so many cool things. Another thing I want to emphasize with the group and some of them have already seen this is words all yes. of your words in english are coded amazing um, they're amazing yeah. yeah it's amazing here's one that you haven't heard you've probably heard me talk about public private there's two worlds there's two perspectives there's good and evil black and white debt and credit so there's two worlds there's public and private public mm -hmm. is the corporate world 
private is the real world. And we have we in the public and we have me in the private. Now, if we look at those two words, you've got we and me, that's the, the turn the W over, you've got M. Yeah. See, so <laughs> they're all <Wow>. coded. <laughs> Very clever, aren't yeah. they, really? Yeah. Hey, um, my, um, my Skype's going wild. Okay. Is it bothering you? <laughs> no, you're coming through beautifully clear. Yeah. Okay. It's just going, it's just going wild, my Skype, and I don't know how to turn the... The other messages off. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so basically, yeah, so we don't really, someone posted something on aliens the other day, and they said, oh, I don't know if you'd have this. Not really. I mean, unless you've got something that is absolutely documented or something that's got good firm evidence, behind it then you know we'll probably post it and have a look um but gen <laughs> pardon <laughs> it's great digital effects yeah exactly no, yeah, yeah they always do them in the dark <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah um i mean i love that sort of stuff the aliens things are fascinating but you know yeah, i mean yeah. Yeah. Mm. and it's not really a, it's not that important because um most of us know that there's a lot of crap um, coming down and has been coming down for the last 10 years, right? And so really I want to focus on more remedies and um, on the real truths of, th of things um, with the elite because um, that's fascinating in itself. It's yeah. just about as fascinating as the aliens. And also if you get a good foundation... Yeah. Hmm? Maybe they are. Aliens. Yeah, yeah, maybe they are aliens. <laughs> Reptilians. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so basically, well, there's different aspects of this. We are peeling back the layers, aren't we? And there's yes. new people that are just beginning to wake awake. Yep. So we will continue to post things like 9-11 and the moon or whatever else. Mm. I mean, there's the fluoride that people don't know, don't know about, the vaccines. Mm. Um, so I, I think we still need to continue to post those sort of things, yep. but also there's a lot, there's a lot of members that have learned this a long time ago and they want to know how to protect themselves and the family. Mm. So it, that's more of the commercial or all of that background that you've got Cliff. Yes. That will be great. And we need those posts. Yes. Um, so there's, there's different aspects here, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and of course, there's physical remedies too, you know, like, you know, you might want certain filters on your taps to get rid of the chemicals. Um, well, well, another they one that... that mandatory throughout the country, yeah. soon, aren't they? Yep, yep. <sighs> so, um, yeah. the, the other thing is that, and I'll put it in this talk because people need to hear it, um, a lot of people have been posting stuff on, oh, I'm getting affected by the spraying and the chemicals or whatever. And the chemicals are not just in the air, they're in the food too. So mm -hmm. people have allergic reactions, we'll call it. Yeah. God, that was noisy. And so people, people have reactions. So there's a cool thing I've found. I mean, we've tried all kinds of things. I've tried organite things which are interesting I've got a, a, a special um, uh, uh, ozonator for water I've tried that that all these things are quite good but the best thing I've found out there is for general getting rid of these symptoms if you get affected by the spraying is you get um, uh, cooking grade hydrogen peroxide which is H2O2 hydrogen peroxide is one there's two uh, hydrogen per two oxide. That's what's called H2O2. And what it is, is if you get the cooking grade, it's I think it's about 30% um, diluted. And if you buy it and you dilute it with distilled water, there's, there's a formula out there on the net. You can go and look it up yourselves. Um, you can ingest it and it will clean you out. You can use it as a mouthwash. 
you can and it keeps your teeth clean way better than a dentist you can if you get the effects from spraying you you put it on a cotton bud and put it up your nose and put one in your ear or ears you dab mm -hmm. it around your eyes swish your mouth gurgle it if you do that the symptoms go away if i get a slight cold and i catch it early and i put the h2o2 hydrogen peroxide in my ears you can hear it crackling and um mm -hmm. and it gets rid of the symptoms wow so look into that because it's really good and it'll help people to fight off some of this stuff maybe you could post that for us yeah if you yeah. find yeah. it would be great yep. yeah sure we'll put it with the another, post. another thing i found the other day is iodine um yes it's yes. for fluoride chlorine bromine yep um yep yeah. excellent uh, thyroid because yeah. people get thyroid issues now even our pets are getting thyroid issues you know? mm. so that's new uh, so yes yeah, so we cover all the usual stuff um, what else do we sort of cover um, I mean, the, the other funny thing is is that a lot of people that join these groups or come and join our group they're already quite seasoned in it <laughs> you know so we're all we're all preaching to the choir um, That's right. <laughs> we really want to get if people in the group want to get people that are hemming and harring about it get them on get them to sort of have a look you know we yeah. can't can't force them but we need to wake people up that um, are ready you know there's no point in trying to slap someone awake who's fast asleep but people that are questioning things I've found in the last few years just posting things around them they they get interested so yeah yeah yep and that's what we need to do waken as many as we can mm. uh, yeah. I'm just looking through the posts um, mm -hmm. the moment was there anything in particular you wanted to talk about post wise uh, yeah we could I do a lot of Alan Watts posts um, his we he does a weekly show now he used to do them five times a week years ago and I and when I post his stuff the older stuff I post some that are his best talks so any Alan Watt po um, posts that I post definitely listen to because they're the best info out there you've ever ever heard he, he holds no bars you know he just tells you how it is and with documents so well worth listening to um, I post a lot of Jordan Maxwell because he was one of the first people in our age to bring light on the subject of the global elite and a lot of people don't know that they think oh who's this old fella well this old fella's been on the on looking into this stuff before you were born <laughs> so he's got more credence than anyone out there um and he's not a shill he's been doing it for years um so who else do we post um i don't really get too much into info wars no i think info wars is good for waking up the masses um yeah. he could be misleading them uh, i can't really see too much evidence of him doing that but it could be could be leaning towards that um because he advertises a lot a lot he gets compromised so i, I don't dislike alex jones but i don't really want to post too much of his stuff on the group you know it's he's out there enough if people want to see him uh i post a bit of bill turner's stuff definitely check him out like i said um uh who else oh yeah michael Tassarian, he's still going hard out De check out his work we post a lot of his stuff um yeah i mean i i get into a lot of occult too occult means hidden of course for the people that don't know um because the as you oh mark passio of course who post a lot of his stuff um because as you know uh, lucy when you get into the stuff you're talking about the occult <laughs> yeah. um we actually started this group because yourself and uh, marcia wanted to get a group based on freemasonry that's right yeah and we're still doing that we're still behind, doing that behind everything yeah because freemasonry runs the church and the church runs the world and freemasonry runs yeah. the government yeah yeah because freemasonry is the church so 
that may sound insane to new newbies, but th to me it's fascinating. And we'll show it to you. Go and look at the previous posts if you're new to the group. Go and check out the previous posts. Yeah. Um, I show you the symbolism with the churches and how it fits together. And it's undoubtedly you're living in a, a Freemasonic system. Um, so I, I generally look at the occult a lot now. Um, the law thing I still am interested in, but I've learned enough to know the basics that they because they're the basics and they're foundational they don't really change that's the other cool thing people go oh have you got the latest stuff on the law you know when i first started have you got the latest is it up to date well <laughs> you don't really need to be up to date you just need the foundation <laughs> yeah yeah um, and then you can sort of go with what updates come out and think oh that fits that doesn't that's not as effective as they were 10 years ago you know some people bring out new things and you think well why not just do this um, a lot of people were getting into this live birth certificate thing. You know, they'll say, oh, you've got to get the live birth cert. Well, I just talked to Bill the other day and I said, hey, Bill, what about a baptism certificate? Because a lot of us in New Zealand get baptised. Well, baptised mm -hmm. is being born again. You're, you're born into bondage in the corporate world with the birth certificate. And then you're uh, born again. You're baptised again through the system with a new certificate a baptism certificate well that's proof of life they're not de they're not baptizing a dead thing yeah so there's another remedy you know for proof of life because why the proof of life because you don't want to be mistaken as a corporation if you're mistaken as a corporation you're controlled by statutes which is anything they say right You've got to yeah. you've got to do this. You've um, you've got to not uh, grow pl weed to to um, give you some relief from pain. You've got to not do that because we said so. And and you're not selling it. You know you're just using it for yourself. I mean that's that's your life. So that's statutory law is doing that. That's not common law. Right. Common common law is above. Common law by its nature is above corporate law. Mm -hmm. It's quite complicated there. Take take many years to learn all of that. Yeah, yeah, because even if I told you the mechanics of it simply, you it would make sense to you, but the people that would, wouldn't want to do it because they don't feel comfortable with, without the details. Yeah, yeah. So it's tricky. It's a tricky situation. But I can definitely say it works, all that stuff that's been out there. Mm -hmm. Um some of it is not misleading but it can be a waste of time but look into it if you want to get free if you want to um, especially the farmers i mean goodness gracious um, that's another very important thing people should be talking about and posting about is the food supply yes yeah yep that's right so where do we start well the farmers need to know what's going on yeah yeah, but in terms of the law, where do we start? Um, I would definitely go and look at the straw man thing, because mm. that what the straw man is is a front. Um, even in their dictionaries, their law dictionaries, it says it's a front, and the world is built on fronts. You know, um, again, look at the world around you. You've got limited liability companies that are fronts to protect the real man from liability. It's what's called limited liability. Um, you have limited liability insurance with the government, mm -hmm. with, a, with a thing called social security, socialist security number. And so the straw man and the social security number and the birth certificate are well worth looking at because they're the little um, chess pieces in the game. Yeah. And um, I've posted, I've got a document, um, I'm sure I put it up in the group, and it's of a high court judge talking about banking without social security and the machinations that go on behind the when the banking system of what they can and can't do so you might want to look at that if you're starting out because that'll give you a bit of freedom <laughs> so these are just the basics you know um you don't have to be um you know uh, uh defending your rights on the road as an um as a person new to this, you know, you want to be starting with your bank first, carefully, mm -hmm. um, and you want to be starting with small things, like um, 
especially if you're self-employed. If you're self-employed, you're the boss. And as they say about self-employment, um, the buck stops with you. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not lying. Are they Do they know what they're saying when they say that? Probably not. <laughs> um, so those are the places I would look at. Yeah. yeah um, that yeah. you need to know that you have a corporation. That corporation is your name. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we all have many names. And, and I've also, we did that talk um, with the birth certificate and sovereignty. Go and listen to mm -hmm. that. That's real, just foundational stuff. Um, it's by no means going to get you out of trouble because it's too basic. But it certainly starts to get you thinking about what you can and can't do. Yeah. Um, people need to look at the Bill of Rights and the constitutions of their countries. Even though I'm, I agree with a lot of people out there like um, Passio, etc., about him not being a constitutionalist. I'm not a constitutionalist either. But if you have the understanding of all these different parts of the system, you're just going to have more power because you're going to have more choice about what you can do. I mean, one day I might use a constitution. Next day I might use contract law. All right. So if people are starting, um, definitely look at contract law. Most people don't know what a contract is. No. I had a, a power a company guy try and sell me a new power contract. A smart, a smart meter? Nah, just a new power contract with a new company They're competing. And he yeah. said, oh, there's no contract. He said, oh, you know, I want to sign you. Oh, I didn't say sign up. He wasn't that blatant. But he said, oh, um, you'll, you'll save a lot of money if you join our power company, right? And mm -hmm. I said, well... And he said, there's no contract. I said, really? There's no contract? So I, don't ha so I don't have to sign anything? And he said, well, no, you've got to sign something. I said, well, wouldn't that be a contract? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, what a moron, you know? So that's how crazy it is. So people need to know contracts because the, the contract means consent. And the whole world you live in works with consent. Yeah. And um, if you understand contract law, which is a fascinating subject, you'll be able to control what you consent to. Yes. Or how you consent to it. Yeah. Because we, believe it or not, we consent to all of this crap through ignorance. We do. Yeah. I mean, um, I posted a thing on um, Albert Pike um, saying you'll meet on the table by choice and consent. Hmm. Right? So they all tell you, all the elites are telling you. If you read Tragedy and Hope, Carol Quigley's Tragedy and Hope, they say that it's uh, um, New Zealand as well, as well as other countries in the West, we're to be a, a see-as-we-go basis. It's to be governed on a see-as-we-go basis. So they came in with their corporate ideas and Freemasonic ideas to overlay a big business plan with all of the mechanacia, saying, well, we're going to see what they do. If they buy what we offer them, well, we've made a sale. Yeah. That's all it is. They're selling you something. I mean, if someone came to try and force me to vote, huh, I'd have a field day with them. I could <laughs> choose. I could choose a whole list of things I could ask them that they have to answer. Yeah. And that's contract law. And then, and then they're not going to answer them, so they go away. Yeah. yeah. Now you're not registered. Now you're not registered. If you're not registered, how are they going to roll call you? To stand that's in line in uniform. It's not going to happen. Yeah, well, that's the cool thing about all this because you've got the people who think, well, this is just the way it is and sign on the dotted line. Yeah. And then you've got the ones like you that have studied and um, have that freedom of choice. That's it. That's, yeah. what, that's what it's all about. And it will never, ever change too. That's um, simple. Yep. A Abraham Lincoln said, um, government by the people for the people shall never perish from the earth. Yeah. And he's right. He's not lying because it's innate in humans to set up corporations. From from Corporations and civilization go um, together completely. You can't have a civilization without corporations. And so humans create corporations. So, you know, we've known about the... Um, 
innate properties of corporations since civilization. Well, you know, the people that set up civilization did. And so this will never change. If you once you learn the basics of this stuff, um, your life will only get better. You'll never go back. It's like waking up again. You you wake up and think, oh well, pff, God, I was an ignoramus before. I'm never going to do that again. No, you won't. You'll never do it again. And then you'll go higher and higher. And in the end, you'll be completely free of government. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's great. It's it's like. Um... Once you're awake, you'll always be awake, and you can't ever turn back. Yeah. But you can only only go forward, um, yeah, yep. and empower yourself. Yeah, that's the only way out. We're never we're not going to beat this with a a massive protest. Um, we're not going to beat it with voting. We're not going to beat it by some miraculous thing of getting organized which is impossible because no one gets organized anymore except the government <laughs> you're not going to beat it by getting organized and taking down the government it won't work they've already figured that one out we're not going to beat it by changing parties either no that that's put there for you to um the it's been said before it's a poll it's like me testing a culture i'm putting a tester into the culture and i'm taking a poll saying, which, which person do you want to vote for? Him, him, or him? Oh, they voted for him. Well, now we know which way to go on our agenda. Yeah. If they voted for the other guy, we'll go this way. So that's all it is. It's, they're just they're data gathering. Everything you put out there is taken from them to say, oh, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Now we'll go this way. We'll go that way. That's all it is. So the more you give them, I mean, you could say, oh, but we're putting all this stuff on Facebook. They're taking it. They already know it. They already know all this shit. They already know it. It's, they'll be going, oh, that guy, whoever Cliff Rockefeller is, um, he's he knows a thing or two. Um, I don't think he's a threat because nobody understands him. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's probably what they'd be thinking, you know. So, yeah. th th in fact, that reminds me, there was someone else the other day that, that said something in the comments. And they said, why would they, the elite, why would they give us this information? Why would they put the stuff out there? Well, it's simple. They put all their shit out there. They put all the agenda out there. You know, it's all spread spread amongst history and books. But they tell you what they're doing. Yeah. It's all out there. It's not that. It is hidden in a way because people don't read. But it is out there. You can mm -hmm. find the truth. It's out there. Yep. And we've posted that yeah. many different times, many different ways. Yep. And, and that's a reason why I get away with what I do is I'm not going out there publicly. This is private. I'm oh, sure they might attack my um, YouTube account, but I'm not saying anything on here that's against anyone. You do what you want. If you yeah. want to be, you know, I, that's so another thing. That, hmm? 1984. Mm. Oh, I can't talk for much longer, Cliff, but yeah. Yeah. 1984. I mean, was that planted? What do you mean by planted? Well, that's, they've given us heaps of information that way, haven't they? Yeah, well, George Orwell, if you look at his, he wrote plenty of books, right? If you mm -hmm. look, if you read up on George Orwell's history. I don't know much about him. Is he yeah. elite? Well, he, that's the thing. People sort of don't know how to treat George Orwell because he's telling you something. You think, oh, he's one of them. But, well, he was one of them. But just like you were one of them when you worked for the, the, the elite, you know, you're all on the. You're all on the chessboard being played, right? So you're an elite. So <laughs> you're in their game. So he was one of them. He worked for the BBC. And the BBC is a, is a propaganda arm of the British government. Right? Mm -hmm. a British brainwashing centre. Mm -hmm. And he could see what was going on. He had a conscience. And he left. Yeah. Right, so he, this, this happens all the time. There's people that, that go, oh my God, I'm out of here. And yeah. now, why wasn't he demonized? Because there's nothing, see, this is the frightening thing, is there's nothing you can do to control the agenda. You can be free yourself, and you can try and free your family. You can try to, but it comes down to an individual level. That'll never change. You'll always be free individually. But, but when it comes to um, the agenda, <laughs> I don't think you're going to, change it because it's too immersed in everything you know so George Orwell can come out and say here's 1984 wake up folks because this is where we're heading 
you've got to stop this. Isn't that what he said? Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That's all he can do. There's nothing more he can do. See, yeah. so then the elite know that. They go, oh, well, we'll promote it. This, in fact, another thing the elite do is they promote the truth. So it dilutes it. You remember that movie that people have been posting about the um, big oh, um, government yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, weather control movie coming out? Yeah, yeah. They're doing that. They're, why the hell would they do that? They're doing that to dilute it and to spin it off into fiction. Totally, totally. So people don't know science from um, science fiction from reality. Yes, that's it. And same with George Orwell, same with all of them. That's mm. why the agenda will continue. Because yeah. Because the people just aren't going to do it. I mean, <laughs> sorry. you know, like put most people, you think the seriousness of it, most people out there are not going to put enough time into study. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've, I'm an insane person, the amount of study I do. And there's only a few people out there that do that. Most yeah. of them are going to be off playing or busy working or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Yep. It's, um, it all comes into play. You can see how people just don't believe. I mean, if you tell somebody that you're drinking toxic waste, they're not going to believe you. And... All of these things, you yep. know, they say, well, that's just in the movies. That's not reality. Yep. Um, because it. it's been so distorted, reality and fantasy. Yep. And, um, and I'm they, pretty they sure they know that. They're so clever about how they've done everything. Yeah. You have to, have to hand that to them. Yep. And it's fantastic. You can see that. You know, you can see the depth of what's been done here. It's incredible. Not many yeah. people can see that. Um yeah. But yeah, that's no. good for you because then you know what's going on. You can go, oh, like now I can practice to make free choice. So there's only a few people out there that make the decision to break free and, mm -hmm. and hopefully teach their family, which is the key. Once mm -hmm. you know, you've got to teach your youngsters because, you know, you're going to take all your info with you. So I've, I'm uh, like most researchers, I'm building up an archive. Mm -hmm. I've not just talks I've done, but I've got like tons of books and PDF files and just tons of information that I've kept and I'll keep it I'll just keep it on file and hand it down to younger people simple awesome great that's all we can do yep yep no you're doing a wonderful job Cliff yeah. so yeah so uh, people that hear this for the first time um, you're welcome to you know join Facebook a lot of people hate it I, I can see why sometimes but <laughs> that's what we're doing anyway right now so i can't afford a website right now so and i don't really you know for me to set up a website and do it i'd need to have people work with me and i don't have anyone to work with me right now so this is what we're doing yeah. um so yeah maybe we'll do a talk in the next few weeks if you want lucy and um you know if people want to put forward questions or whatever on yeah, more specific so we'll topics and we'll, we'll, we'll get into it especially the law and freedom thing because it, it is entertaining you know <laughs> you'll you'll be quite entertained by it too yeah. um so we'll just go I, from there yep great okay well thanks Steph. i'm yep. going to have to log off now okay it's been great talking to you yep thanks a lot Lucy. And, uh, well, maybe we'll do it in a few weeks' time. Yep. Okay. Okay. So Great. Ev everyone so. out there, have a good day for the rest of the day, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah.